and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to discuss and learn about the Databricks Serverless. When you talk about the Databricks Serverless or the Serverless in Databricks, consider it as a compute model where you do not have to manage what type of configuration you are going to use. So traditionally uh, or, or normally what we do is we use or we create a cluster in Databricks. In the cluster you define that hey I want to use this type of cluster. These are the number of nodes or these are the number of workers that I need for my cluster. And then you start that cluster. That cluster takes around four to five minutes to start and then you go about using it. In case of serverless it is also a compute model. It helps you to run your queries, it helps you to run your code, but it is serverless means you do not have to put in the configuration on what type of cluster to use or how many nodes to ex uh, nodes you have to put in or how many number of executors you have to put in. You don't have to worry about it. That is what serverless is all about. Just like you use compute of cluster to run your code, to uh, run your queries in Databricks. Similarly, serverless also you'll use it for the same purpose, just that you are not going to define the configurations in the cluster. That is all managed by Databricks. So if you see serverless in Databricks, it is a versionless compute model. Versionless means it's not something that is coming version by version or you need to upgrade it. So even if there is any upgrade or a patch that is there that's done by Databricks, you don't have to worry about it. It is a versionless compute model that allows users to run workloads without managing the clusters. In this model, Databricks automatically allocates and manages the compute resources, allowing users to focus on the other tasks. So now, Databricks itself is adding resources for you. It's adding compute for you. It's adding uh, virtual machines for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, what type of machine should I use? Is it scaling or it's not scaling? You don't have to worry about anything at all and you can simply focus on your tasks. So that is the major point or the, one of the selling points for the serverless. Now, when you say, uh, when you talk about serverless, there are multiple benefits of it. Right, so the, the very first benefit is that it reduces the management overheads of, uh, you know, managing a cluster, making sure that, uh, you know, it has a proper downtime, you know, you are using the right type of machine, you are using the right number of executors, so all that overhead is gone because Databricks is taking care of it. It has a rapid startup and scaling time, which is very, very important because if um, you have already worked on Databricks and you have created a cluster or you have seen it takes around four to six minutes anywhere between four to six minutes to start a cluster not less than that so even if you have a job running or a workflow running right the very first thing that happens is the cluster starts and it takes around four to six minutes just to start that cluster in contrary in serverless what happens is the moment you click on start within three seconds it's up so that start time that uh, you know the idle start time that is there that is completely reduced in the serverless that is one of the very 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 major point so if you're working on a project where uh, you know the uh, the time that is taken for the data to reach from the source to target really matters right you need it within seconds that place or in that particular project serverless will be very helpful now, apart from that, uh, in serverless, you don't even have to do any capacity handling because you don't have to do, you know, any upscale. Uh, you, you basically don't have to add the number of executor, do any kind of upscaling, any security patching, any security or any patching. That's not required because it is versionless, right? So automatically, Databricks would be upgrading it, managing it automatically. So you don't have to worry about the reliability, the security policies or the capacity shortages. So now let's I'll go to the Databricks portal and we'll see, you know, in the first place how we can enable the serverless in our workspace. So this is how the Databricks workspace will look like. Now, if you see, if I go to the top right hand, right, this drop down, you click on the manage account. Now remember that serverless only works with the Unity catalog. So there is no serverless without Unity catalog. It works on the Unity catalog tables. So make sure that you are now, because now, uh, you know, 
from the legacy system everything has been migrated to uc already and serverless specifically works for the unity catalog now why i'm saying this i'll explain it in some other videos but most of the things of serverless works with the uc um, compatible tables only so now the moment you click on this manage account you will land into this kind of account console right so now if you see on the left side there's an option of settings click on that and then there's an option of feature enablement go ahead click this option you will see the first option itself is to enable the serverless serverless compute for the workflow notebooks and the delta live tables and this is where you have to get it enabled it takes around four to five minutes for the entire workspace to refresh but this is where you enable it you can also see start up a job notebook pipeline in second instead of minutes that's what we have discussed at this at this time serverless notebooks jobs and DLT have unrestricted access to public network. I hope you understand that. And there's a documentation also available. If you click on that, you can go ahead and read this documentation as well. Now we'll not focus on the documentation in this video. So I'll go back to my Databricks workspace. Now after this, it has already been enabled. By default, it's not enabled. So you have to go make sure that you have enabled it. And then if you click on compute, so this is my traditional cluster. So let me first create a cluster. So if you see, let me create a single node, the simplest kind of cluster. And so this is my simplest cluster that I'm creating. Okay, and let me just simply click on create compute. The reason I created it is that you will understand how much time it takes, right, to create it. So now if I go back to compute, this is the cluster and it has started creating. It has not started yet. It is running. It is making sure the virtual machine that I've configured in my cluster, the setting that I've provided, you know, it is making sure that VM is available. It fetches that VM and it's starting that it's starting that VM. But if you go to the SQL warehouse here, you can see already there's a serverless uh, SQL warehouse that I've created. Let me create a new one, create SQL warehouse, right? So let me say demo warehouse. And now the only thing that you need to check here is the size. You know how many dbus that you want so let me check one and then scaling now the scaling option it's more of like it will be it is more of an upper limit if required it can go maximum up to that otherwise it won't and then you select the type as serverless and then you can simply click on create that's what it is all about 20 doesn't mean that it, it is going to take 20. 20 just means that if required it can scale up to 20. And you can see manage permissions. If you want to assign specific groups or users permissions to it, you can do that as well. Over here, uh, you know, the, the permissions can be anything to use, monitor or to manage. So now you can see the moment you started it, it's already running. So the, this, you see this green symbol, right? So it has already started. If you want to monitor it, you can monitor the details also over here. So this is how quick it is. So you can see that it has started. Now, if I again go back to the compute, you can still see that my cluster is still spinning up. However, my SQL warehouse is already up, right? So now I'll just stop it because I, I, I want to show you how easily you can spin it up. So apart from that, while my cluster is starting, if I go to my workspace and let's say I open a notebook, right? In this notebook, let me just open one of the notebook that I have. You can see that this is one of the notebook. Now I can also attach my serverless over here. I can also attach my serverless, right? Now, if you see the serverless is available. Now this serverless has not started yet. The moment I click on it and you can see, right? I can attach my serverless compute to my notebook as well, right? So I don't want to clear the state. Let me just use this one. Okay, serverless can also be used to run your SQL and the Python commands within your notebook. So you can see that this is one of the SQL command, right? And similarly, any SQL and Python command can also be run within the notebook. So serverless, you can attach within the notebook and you can run it. So for example, if you look at one of these commands where I am selecting the data from two tables, so you can see this is the command which is run on the serverless already, right? So if you see this, taxi and trips right now the output you see the another feature here is first of all you can run your serverless and you can run your sql and the python queries both 
and in the output you can see there are two outputs that are generated from both your commands so this feature is not available with the uh, cluster but this is available here so you can actually scroll through the first output and you can scroll to the second output as well this is how good it is and similarly if you go back to this and you click on here see performance right so you can actually see the performance of the query if i click on this you will see that you end up seeing these details about how your query was actually run right and uh, you know all the metrics you know for example the file partitions filling to the desk number of rows read written everything is mentioned here so even if you want to do any kind of optimization you can have a look at it to understand how your query has actually performed now of course we are using a very simple query here select star but even if you are using any complex query it can actually help you if you see on uh, if you click on see query profile right it will tell you exactly how your query has run so you can see the very first thing it has done is it has scanned my table right it has scanned this and then the parquet writer and then the write it to how many number of rows was uh, read okay and written so all that regarding your memory regarding the number of rows and of course you know the change of view over here so this is how a detailed uh, query analysis is and similarly if you go to the sql editor right uh, in the sql editor also if you see uh, this is the demo warehouse it has not started yet now if i have this query and i simply select this and i click click on run selected now you can see it has started the running the serverless and you can see within two three seconds it has got it up and i am able to see my output so any kind of business users can actually utilize this workspace if they want to just query the data that has been loaded by data pipelines now you can see this all details is available over here right so it's all available and even if you click here the query metrics the same that i showed you in the notebook are also available here so this is your databricks serverless in detail but if you go to the compute if you see this cluster the cluster start time is actually very high uh, let me just terminate this cluster because i don't really need it apart from this uh, even if you go to the workflows let's say i i want to create a workflow i'll click on create a job and then i'll give a path to my notebook or whatever where, whatever notebook i want to run there also you can see in the compute option there's a serverless option i can actually choose my serverless to run a workflow as well so this is also available this option is available now let me go back and we'll discuss a little more uh, on uh, the serverless now i have already discussed with you guys that serverless can be used for the notebooks can be used for jobs can be used for the sql warehouse we have already seen it similarly it can also be used for the delta light table pipelines and the model serving so whenever you create a dlt pipeline you will see that there's an option for serverless similarly when we talk about the limitations right python and sql are the only supported languages you can't run it on scala or any other language similarly jar libraries are not supported you cannot upload a library okay you cannot upload a library onto a warehouse however you can uh, into onto a serverless warehouse however you can do it on a cluster similarly uh, you know you cannot add notebook tags for streaming usually there is no usually we add a time based trigger intervals right that is not available when you use a serverless so these are the few limitations of serverless is serverless used in the real time yes it is but it has its own limitations because for example you cannot upload the jar libraries and similarly it is costly so over a period of time when you use it you understand that hey it's that it's costly so we need to limit the usage so that is how it is being used currently i hope you like the video you understood the concept that i was trying to portray or i was trying to showcase in databricks serverless video and thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel